Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be telling you how you can save a ton of hard drive space by project archiving. So I kind of came across this issue recently where I was looking back at my folder because my hard drive was getting filled up and I was noticing that there was a ton of projects that I had that I hadn't touched in a year or more and they were taking up a ton of hard drive space and I knew that I wasn't going to really ever need to get those projects back again. But I sort of had that like hoarder's fear of, you know, throwing something away. And I didn't want to completely get rid of all my files, but I had to figure out a way to consolidate things because otherwise I would be going through terabytes and terabytes of storage way too quickly. And again, a lot of these projects that I'm doing this with are not like massive, massive, really high budget projects. Those type of projects, I probably would keep all of the data because their, their budget is high enough where it's actually going to then, you know, it would sort of work out in the whole scheme of things. So I'm going to talk about how I do all of this and sort of a couple different ways you can do it. So the first key thing is taking your final renders. So let's say you're done with your commercial or wedding, your final renders and putting them inside of a folder. So for instance, I'm gonna to go to this uh, video I made for a bladesmith. Now in his, I have the 4K final version of, there was a teaser and then there's also the full video, which is somewhere, but either way. Um, or actually I might've mislabeled it. Yeah, so anyway, full video in this folder. Now the other thing that we're going to do is you can see all this media and you're probably thinking, what is all this? And I'm gonna get into that in a minute and we're gonna talk about that in a minute and sort of how to make this folder. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go over to Dimitri Resolve and this is basically identical in Premiere Pro. It's just like, a, it's all media management and project archiving. So literally it's the exact same tools, it's just in a different software. So you can pretty much follow along almost beat for beat. So in this case, I'm working on a commercial. So the thing about a commercial is generally you have less footage than something like a wedding or a documentary or maybe even a short film. So you have less footage, but generally speaking, it's the quality of the footage is a little bit bigger of a deal. You know, if I have a 1080p version of a wedding, I'm probably going to be fine. Having a 4K version of my commercial is probably a big deal. So in my case, I'm going to make sure my timeline is selected because we're going to talk about this in a minute. I'm going to go to file and media management. So this is the sort of hub. And again, in Premiere Pro, it's almost identical. I'm pretty sure it's, it's called media management as well. It might be just called project archiving, but either way. You have two main... Um, two main, I guess, decisions to make. I, I don't, I kind of ignore the clips. That's more like a borderline, like a daily type thing. Let's talk about first the commercial aspect. So generally speaking, if you're doing a commercial, you have one timeline and that's like your main commercial that you're working on. And you could select several if you had several. And the idea would be that you would want to keep probably the highest quality version of your final commercial and the clips that you use, because maybe you have to re-edit them later on down the road, or you just want to have those clips for your reel. That's a big one. Um, so you have the, and, and this is what I do for like a commercial or corporate video. I would come in and select the timelines I want. I could do the entire project, but I'm just going to do timelines. So mine's selected right now. And I'm going to do copy and trim using uh, trim used media, keeping 15 frame handles. So what this means is that, let's say, so you can kind of see up in these clips, the in and out points, it's going to only pull over the full 4K versions of my clips and leave 15 frame handles on either side. So this way, if I wanted to, you know, go a little bit extra, like if I had to re-edit something and I want a little bit extra on the tail and, and uh, you know, the pre and post end of a clip, I have those. But it's only using the media that I'm using. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, that's kind of redundant because your final video that you render is only the same. Well, that's true, but your final render is most likely compressed. So your final render maybe is H.264, really highly compressed, um, which is great to have because it's the final product, but you wanna have those really nice high quality clips sitting there waiting for you. So in this case in the commercial, I would go through, I would go come here to timeline, I would copy or move, whatever one you wanna do, I prefer copy. And then I would come over to, again, the copy and trim used media and start. Now, we're going to talk about this more in the entire project, but you could also transcode this media. So if you wanted to transcode it, the only the used media to a certain type, uh, you can do that. 
Now, there's a big difference between used media and trim used media. And what this means is, for instance, we can see over here, I use this clip 1633150, right? It's for my GH5. Now, I only used about like two seconds of that clip. If I click move all used media, it's going to do that entire clip. So that entire clip is going to be moved or transcoded, whichever you're doing. When you're doing the trim media, the trim used media, it is trimming it to only the portion that you have selected and that's in your timeline. So again, that's really handy. But again, so if you're doing this for the commercial way, that's probably the way to go. Uh, again, it's easiest. Now I'm gonna talk about maybe the larger projects that are a um, little less quality based and a little bit more uh, security based. And what I mean by that is something like a wedding. You know, a wedding doesn't really matter if it's in 4K, you know, let's say, you know, you've, you mind you, you've given your clients the 4K versions already, you know, you've delivered that to them, you've delivered your high quality stuff to them, they have it, right? So they already have that. So at this point, it's just a safety measure. So if five years down the road, they contact you and they say, hey, do you have a wedding video? Now, granted, in your contract, you should probably not guarantee it past that point anyway, you should say it's all on you. But, you know, it's one of those things it's nice to kind of just keep safe. And, and again, you can use it for your own reel in the future. But again, we're not so much quality-based as we are quantity-based. So we're going to click Entire Project. Now, you could do the same thing. You could move all of the trim media. But what I'm going to do in this case is I would transcode, especially in a wedding, all of it. So what I would do is I would transcode all the media. Actually, I'd probably do all of the used media, but... Me personally, I wouldn't because there's a little bit of different workflow thing for me. But anyway, I would do transcode all media. And personally, I would do H.265 8-bit. Super compressed, but it it you know has all of the visual detail that you need. So in the end, I just do a 1080p. So I shoot you know H.264, 4K. So now I'm doing H.265, um, 1080p. And it would be everything. So you're not cutting down, you know, a massive, massive amount, but you're going to cut down your file sizes by probably about a third or more. So if you have a huge wedding that's 200, 300 gigs, you know, you're knocking it down quite a bit. And if you were totally uh, sold on only needing the clips that you used in a wedding or so, you could just transcode and trim only the used media. Now, again, if you feel comfortable doing that, I would highly recommend doing that because, again, the more that you can cut down, the better for long-term storage is going to be. But let's talk about those long those like long storage issues because, okay, now you have your project, right? So, again, I would just click Start, and again, it's the same thing in Premiere. So, in this case, uh, I have this. Now, the problem is it gives you all of these files, but they mean nothing. So one of the things that you have to do is you're going to want to go and export your timelines also as an EDL or XML. So in my case, I can just go to my timeline, timelines, export, uh, EDL, XML, right? So what I always do is I save that in that same folder. And again, same thing in Premiere, you can do it exactly the same. So in this folder, I have my final video that I compressed and then I sent to my clients, my either transcoded or copied media, and my EDL. In my case, I use EDL. So all of this is right in this folder. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna keep one of these on my hard drives, right? So I on the drives that I keep and I archive and I back up here at my physical studio, I'm gonna keep a copy of this because now I have these that I can access at any point in time. So if I need to go and grab um, a clip from one of these to throw in my reel or something, they're all right here, they're all ready for me to go. But the thing is, it's not safe and you can't totally trust this. Now, one thing that really has made me nervous recently is that Vimeo has actually taken down accounts um, because of copyright claims. Now, granted, I, should, I don't have any copyright stuff, at least to my knowledge, but the fear is that I do shoot weddings where a lot of times they're playing copyrighted music in the background. So one of my big, big fears was that I would be, you know, I deliver all of my videos through Vimeo. So here I am delivering all my videos through Vimeo. And then one day my entire Vimeo account is shut down and boom, it's all gone. Well, you know, I have all of these original files, but let's say something happens to my hard drive too. Now, granted, we're talking, you know, a lot of things going wrong here, but it's totally possible and you want to be safe. 
So what I do is I have everything backed up to a third option, and that is the cloud, in my case, Google Drive. But here's one of the interesting things about this. So Google Drive is great, but let's be real, unless you have Google Fiber or you know Fios or something, you're probably getting like 15 to 20 megabytes per second upload speeds. So this eight terabytes that I've been using over here, which is most of my main work drive, took months to you know, upload. And the problem is I shoot a lot. So the more I shoot, the more footage I have, and it's just a constant catch up. So what I've decided is that now every project will be backed up the archived project. So in my project archives, I now have all of those same folders that I have right here on my desk or on my actual drives on Google Cloud or Google Drive. And the difference is, is that instead of, for instance, I'm going to give you an example. So this Jordan Lamote, his, uh, his bladesmith and his video was about 300 gigs, like a lot of footage, like a lot, a lot, a lot of footage. And it was about a year ago, actually over a year ago that we did that. So it's just one of those things where I can archive that. So again, 300 gigs right now, this project folder is 4.3 or excuse me, 4.7 gigs. And again, it's got the finals, it's got those, you know, clips that I need. So now I only have to upload 4.7 gigs to my Google Drive. Now this could save you, now I already have the business account, it doesn't matter, but this could save you from having to get the business account and only getting a one terabyte account. Because now instead of each project being three, you know, two, 300 gigs, each project is anywhere from five to, you know, 20 gigs, which is incredible. So again, I'm cutting back on my physical storage actually at my studio, but I'm also cutting back massively on my Google Drive storage. Again, making it easier to upload and easier to archive. So now, let's say the worst case scenario happens. Vimeo shuts my account down, they take all of my videos down, so now every one of my wedding clients that didn't download it is saying, hey, where's my wedding video? And let's say my hard drive fails. Well, granted, again, I do have a, a physical backup here, but let's say my house burnt down, right? Now I have another version of those backup project archives on Google Drive. So it would take a, you know, perfect storm to basically knock out any of this data, which knock on wood, that hopefully isn't going to be the case. But again, you can never be too safe when it comes to people's data. But again, it's just finding that balance of, holding on to this data, but also not holding on to so much of it in so long that you're costing yourself massive amounts of money year after year because you're not archiving the projects. So anyway, guys, that was a long-winded video. Hopefully it was informative and hopefully help you guys out. Again, this is the same in Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. I, I think Final Cut has probably something similar, um, but it's a really great way to archive your projects and just, you know, really cut down on file sizes and save yourself some money. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.